All right, how's it going, y'all? Today we're gonna to be talking about which Synology NAS to buy. If you're looking for a video editing server where you can host media files for Final Cut Pro, Premiere, Avid, anything, on a Synology NAS via network share, and so you have multiple editors all working on the same projects together and all have one central repository rather than having everybody having to have all of the footage on their individual machines. And this also works even if you're just a single editor and you wanna be able to move around between computers or anything like that. And it just makes the entire workflow really easy. So having all of your footage on a single network share makes organization and everything so much easier than running around with a bunch of hard drives because you can put tons and tons of storage in a Synology NAS and access it over the network incredibly quickly. And so it's great for just having tons of storage all in a central file location. But it's really important that you get a fast enough of the Synology for a couple of different reasons. One, you really need to make sure that during playback, you're going to be able to serve enough footage from the NAS to your computer so that it's not dropping frames. So what this means is you've got to have a big enough of a network connection, so either one or 10 gigabit connection to the NAS from your computer to be able to serve up the media when you're hitting play and watching timeline go by. And so that is the raw throughput of the NAS. And so for a one gigabit connection, that's about 125 megabytes per second at best. So you can actually edit off of a one gigabit connection with 4K footage, as long as it's not a huge file size of 4K. So if you just got one connection, you won't be able to do like a huge ProRes file, but something like an MP4 file will work incredibly well and you really won't drop any frames on playback. If you wanna do ProRes though, I would highly recommend either using proxies, which is what I use whenever I'm editing on my laptop with a one gig connection or even over Wi-Fi. And so the proxies are much smaller file sizes. And so when you're editing, it doesn't have to play back the full 4K footage and send that over the network. Instead, it can just send a much smaller file, which is a proxy file. Then when you do the full export, you get the full quality. And so it's kind of the best of both worlds. But if you really want to have multiple editors all having a lot of connections to this thing and you want to have multicam, you're really going to want at least a 10 gigabit connection. Because when you're doing a multicam scenario, every single one of the footages in that multicam has to be sent to your NAS upon playback anytime you're looking at the multicam window. And so that is really the true test of how much network bandwidth you need. A 10 gigabit connection will almost certainly be able to do anything you need though, so you do have that. The next thing you also need to make sure is that your hard drives will be able to serve the data fast enough. If you get something like DS1621+, Plus, or really any Synology with a 10 gig card, this is probably not gonna be a problem, but I would recommend at least having six drives because it is going to give you a lot faster speed. So when you're talking on Synology and you're talking about RAID, having more drives means your playback is actually faster because it's storing the data all across multiple drives. And then when you need the data from the Synology, they can all be read off of the drives all at the same time. And so instead of reading from one drive at once, you can be reading from 10 drives at once, increasing your throughput by 10 times. And so that's why you can get some really fast speeds off of slow mechanical hard drives by just combining them all together. And so with that, Synology has also really upgraded the CPUs in the 21 plus generation with these AMD CPUs. These AMD CPUs are about twice as fast as the old Intel Celeron models. And that makes a huge difference when you're playing stuff back. Because when you're scrubbing through a timeline, it's a lot of quick actions to your NAS that if you've got a really slow CPU, can slow you down there. And so a really great model is honestly this guy right here, the DS1621+. It has six drive bays, so you can have that in a SHR1 configuration, which means you have five drives readable, which will give you around one gigabyte per second of throughput. Then the other thing that is super advantageous that this thing has is M.2 NVMe SSD slots. And so what these SSDs are used for is essentially ultra fast SSD caching. And so what it allows you to do is put your most recently used files in these ultra fast SSD caches. Then whenever you need that file, instead of having to go to the slow mechanical drives, it can access them from the ultra fast NVMe drives. And where this gives you a huge performance benefit is when you're scrubbing through a timeline. Scrubbing through a timeline is a lot different than just regular playback. Because on regular playback, your computer knows the next 50 frames that it needs to grab, and it can say, hey Synology, I'm gonna need all these frames in the next second or so. 
And so that means that it can really quickly get those frames because it's got a lot more lead time. And so by the time the frames are actually gonna be displayed on your screen, your Synology's had a ton of time to give your computer them. However, it's incredibly different when you're scrubbing through a timeline. So when you're dragging your cursor through a timeline, your computer does not know what frames you're going to. And so it has very little time from when you hover over the thing to when that frame needs to be displayed on screen. And so because of that, scrubbing through a timeline is incredibly important to have an SSD cache. Because if you just have regular mechanical drives, even if they have really fast throughput in aggregation, they're still going to be slow in what's called access time. So since you need the frames immediately, when you're trying to ask a mechanical hard drive for that, it's a spinning platter. And so the actual hard drive head has got to mechanically move and the data has got to come around on the disk in order to give you that frame back. And so if you're trying to access a ton of different files from a ton of different places on the disk, which is what's happening when you're scrubbing through the timeline, mechanical drives get really slow at that. But with an SSD cache, that happens almost instantaneously because SSDs do not have moving parts. They can access essentially any part on their disk at the exact same speed. And so by having the footage in that SSD cache, which happens automatically, you will have a much smoother playback whenever you're scrubbing through a timeline. It will not be choppy and you'll just get a nice, easy, constant picture, just like they were stored locally on an SSD. And it just makes the experience so much better. And so I would really look at having an SSD cache if you can because I have noticed huge performance increases even with a single user having a SSD cache when scrubbing through a timeline in Final Cut Pro. And that will be exacerbated. If you have three or four editors, you will get so much better performance if they're all scrubbing at the same time, if your NAS can be hosting the files off that SSD cache. And so that's why I would really recommend an SSD cache for video editors especially. And so now we've talked about two different upgrades you can have for your NAS. The first off is that 10 gig network card. I would really recommend having a 10 gig network card for any time you've got over a 4K file or wanna do anything with ProRes. It'll be a lot better and it'll just be a lot more reliable. The next was that SSD cache. And if you do get one, make sure to set it up as read only. Especially video editors, having a read write cache is just going to cause everything to be slower and you're gonna have a worse time. By read only, it's going to be faster and you're going to have more data available to you because you don't need a redundant RAID. So a read only cache for video editors is really important. And another thing I would recommend doing is untick the box that says skip sequential IO. You actually want sequential IO in these NVMe slots because it will make everything so much faster. You want as much of the data in this NVMe slot as possible. And now the third upgrade that is also really crucial is RAM. Think of RAM as an ultra, ultra fast SSD cache and stores the location of everything. And so RAM is so much better than SSD cache, though you don't have nearly as much of it. So I would really recommend upgrading to at least 16 gigabytes of RAM if you can for multiple video editors. That's because having extra RAM just means more data will be stored in that RAM and can be handed off to editors much faster, giving everybody a much better experience and you will just get overall much lower latency, especially when you're scrubbing through a timeline. Now Synologies are also scalable. You can have 16 hard drive versions with these massive files and you can just be serving tons of different editors, all being able to access the files in one central file location. And so in my experience, and I've actually set this up for a couple different video production houses, having a rack mount Synology with like 12 bays is awesome for video production houses who have multiple editors who are all going to be hitting the same footage at the same time. And they are really high performing, especially the rack mounted ones. And one of the higher end Synologies can easily handle five 4K editors going at the exact same time, all pulling and even scrubbing data from the NAS. And so they're great tools for being able to store all your footage in one place and just centralize everything. So I did do want to talk about Final Cut Pro. There is actually a special configuration you need to do if you want to store your Final Cut timeline on a Synology NAS. It's really easy and I'll go ahead and leave a link to it, but there is a custom configuration you need to do and you have to be somewhat comfortable with SSH and just Linux in general to be able to do it. Now, the tutorial will be very easy, you just click a couple of buttons, but that is one thing you do have to do in order to allow Final Cut to store the library on a Synology NAS. So overall, these things hold true for any NAS you're looking at. 
having a NAS for all of your footage as a video editor can make your life so much easier and so much more organized, especially if you have multiple editors, it's a must. And so I would highly recommend setting up a NAS, a Synology or any other NAS as they just can make your life a lot better. All right, well, that's gonna be it for this. Go ahead and leave any other tutorials or overviews you'd like to see me make. And if you wanna sponsor the channel, there's a link for that. And it will also give you access to all my videos early. All right, have a good one, bye.